This is Twit. Earlier this week, The Guardian broke a major story reporting that the Saudi uh, Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, allegedly hacked the iPhone of Amazon chief Jeff Bezos back in 2018. Really juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Vice's motherboard got hold of a report that shows exactly how it happened. And joining us to talk about the report is Joseph Cox, returning to the show, senior staff writer for Vice's motherboard. Welcome back, Joseph. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to have you back. So uh, first things first, I suppose, how did Bezos and MBS come to communicate within WhatsApp? I think that was kind of the first thing people were noticing is like, whoa, they're in connection. You know, they're, they're communicating on WhatsApp. That feels kind of uh, interesting in and of itself, let alone everything that comes after. But um, how did that begin and how did the this alleged hacking go down that we know of? Yeah, so according to the report that we got, which is from FDI Consulting, the firm that Bezos eventually hired to investigate this alleged hack of his phone, it doesn't just lay out sort of the technical information they have, but also the chronology of um, events that they believe led up to this. So to answer your question about how they started chatting in the first place, uh, in April 2018, they had a dinner in Los Angeles. Apparently, they swapped numbers there. And then I believe a couple of days later, Bezos just reached out, says, hello, MBS, you know, the acronym often used for the crown prince. And he replied. And then they didn't really chat for a while until uh, May when the crown prince seemingly randomly out of context sent an mp4 video file to bezos's phone uh, and then that's when the weird stuff started to happen according to the investigators the weird the stuff weird okay stuff. so uh, oh, man so so many places you can go with this so this video file i mean is there any indication that that uh, bezos was alerted to kind of the the strangeness of suddenly getting a video file out of nowhere. Did he open it? Like, how it, was it enough of a vector for him to have just re received that video file, or did he have to play it? Or do we even know that about this? So this report is kind of filling in the blanks of a chronology we've had for a while. Um, previously, we knew that intimate photos of just Jeff Bezos had been leaked somehow and were given to, I believe, the National Enquirer um, U.S sort of tabloid newspaper. Uh, they then tried to blackmail, essentially, Jeff Bezos about this. And he came out at the time and says, they have photos of me. I'm not going to um, succumb to these threats. And then shortly right. after, Jeff Bezos's security head wrote an op-ed in the Daily Beast saying, well, making this very explosive claim that it was the Saudis who apparently hacked uh, his phone and then obtained this information. So we knew that that was... Um, that, that sort of information was out there, but we didn't know the exact chronology of events until this comes out. So when Jeff Bezos gets this video, he doesn't, that, that hasn't happened. It's only later when the photos get released that people start to go, oh, maybe the phone was hacked. And then that's when they started to investigate. When FDI Consulting did eventually, you know, communicate with Jeff Bezos, tell him, hey, we believe it's the Saudis who did this, seemingly randomly out of the blue again, a day later, the Crown Prince te uh, WhatsApps Jeff Bezos saying, hey, everything you hear about Saudi Arabia is wrong. There is no beef between Saudi Arabia and Amazon. And I mean, kind of played his hand, at least according to the report, because that was non-public information at the time. But pe people didn't know that Jeff Bezos was investigating this alleged hack of his phone. But somehow the Crown Prince um, texted him out of the blue about it. Oh, that's fascinating. Wow. Okay. Now, um, now there's kind of some speculation around like, okay, well, who actually sent this, right? Um, obviously, it's coming from the the account of MBS, but anyone could have access to that. Is there any sort of certainty or at this point as far as like whether MBS specifically was like, hey, I think I'm going to hack Jeff Bezos, you know, that, that <laughs> kind of, I know, to, to a certain degree kind of seems out, outside of his pay grade, but maybe not. Maybe Maybe it was him. Any certainty there? I mean, it's still wild, even if it wasn't the crown prince and it was just someone using his account. That is still crazy. I yeah. mean, usually when we have like phishing emails or dodgy links, it's going to be from someone pretending to be someone else. From all intents and purposes, according to the uh, FDI consulting investigation, this was the real 
Crown Prince WhatsApp account. Now, as you say, maybe the Crown Prince wasn't controlling it. Maybe he gave it to, you know, one of his commanders or someone else to then send the malware if that's what happened. I mean, indeed, one of the senior Saudi figures has a reputation for sourcing this sort of malware. He bought uh, hacking tools from the Italian surveillance company hacking team um, and then had a, later had a share in that company as well. So Saudi Arabia definitely has the access to these sorts of tools, but we don't know whether it was, you know, the Crown Prince doing it exactly, but apparently it was his account, which is already crazy enough. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big deal in and of itself. Um, what's lacking here in this report? Obviously, it's, you know, it, it can only go so far. What do we not know? What, what are some of these holes that are still left kind of unanswered at this point? Yeah, so The Guardian, as you said, initially reported on the piece, and the FT also mentioned uh, the FTI consulting report, and then eventually we obtained it, and we just published it in full because there was still a lot of information not quite known about how this hack allegedly went down. When we pushed that out, we also spoke to various um, iPhone forensic experts specifically, and they saw some issues. Uh, one of the main ones is that the report only really relies on net network data, as in they looked at the phone, and they never actually found a piece of malware. They never found a piece of malicious software. What they did find was that shortly after the video file from the Crown Prince account um, was sent to Jeff Bezos, a large amount of data allegedly started transmitting from the phone. Sure, that's notable, that's interesting, but some experts are saying, that, I mean, that's not necessarily enough to say that there was malware. So what they could have done, what several experts said, was they could have jailbroken the iPhone, which of course lots of your viewers will be familiar with, and this will allow you to get sort of a lower level insight into the iPhone, and that, if anywhere, that's where government grade malware is probably going to be visible after you've done that process. Mm -hmm. And judging by the report, we don't know if they actually did that, potentially it seems not, but there are still plenty of avenues for investigation, and some people are pretty skeptical about the attribution claims, or at least they want to have more information before making a, a, a solid um, estimate on this hack. Okay. So, given that this is is very you know, incredibly likely to have happened, like what's driving it? What is the motivating factor behind the scenes here to uh, bring them so so close, so focused on Jeff Bezos and his phone? I mean, of course, it's it's hard to mind read. It's hard to um, figure out intent, but there is enough context to work at work at least something out. Yeah. Um, of course, Jeff Bezos is the owner of the Washington Post, which hired the columnist Jamal Khashoggi, which the Saudis went on to brutally murder in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Um, and shortly after this, these various reports about hacking came out. Jeff Bezos himself tweeted uh, an image commemorating Jamal Khashoggi. So right. that would appear to be the main link there. Uh, apparently, Jeff Bezos was also exploring business interests in Saudi Arabia. But I would probably f frame it more in the context of Saudi Arabia, as I said, has these capabilities of these spying tools and also has a history of aggressively surveilling critics, including those close to Jamal Khashoggi. So this would probably, if we're going to assume the hack happened, sits within that context of spying on dissidents or rivals or activists. Of course, Jeff Bezos is not any of those, but he was facilitating, let's say, Jamal Khashoggi's publications. Right, absolutely. Um, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Now, have the because there's a lot of people you know, and organizations at play here, we've got the Saudis who probably have something to say about this. We've got Jeff Bezos himself, who I'm sure has something to say. And then, of course, we've heard from the UN. Like, what is what is the conversation that's swirling from the people who are actually active into in this story right now? So, unsurprisingly, the Saudis have come out and completely denied it all, said these claims are absurd, but then the Wall Street Journal reported yesterday that officials, Saudi officials close to the Crown Prince knew about the plan to hack Jeff Bezos. They did not know about the uh, alleged plan to then blackmail him with photos afterwards, but they said they were aware of a plan to hack him. Um, the UN has called for an investigation to this. The chronology of this was that FTI Consulting completed this report, the one that we obtained and published. They provided it to the UN, and then reading that report, they then called for an investigation. So it looks like there's mounting pressure from various different groups here. And of course, there's also the malware companies which sell these sorts of capabilities. We don't know um, which specific company provided the tool here, if one was indeed in this hack. It could be NSO Group, it could be Hacking Team. Uh, it's now been renamed Memento Labs. Both of those strongly deny their tools being used in this attack, um, but we don't know yet. 